Hi guys, with this video, I'm kicking off a new series called Baseline SQL. Here, in this series, we'll be learning how to create SQL code from scratch. Now the question is, what is SQL? SQL stands for Structured Query Language, and it can be pronounced either as SQL or SQL, doesn't matter. What that is, is this is a language used to query SQL databases. Most enterprises, most websites, most anything run on SQL databases. So in order to query the databases yourself, you need SQL. Or if you write programs which query such SQL databases, your programs need to send SQL code. That means you as a developer have to know what kind of SQL code for your program to send in order to get that data that you require from that or these databases. Now, common uh, SQL databases are PostgreSQL, Microsoft SQL Server, MySQL, MariaDB, and SQLite. All of them, with the exception of Microsoft SQL Server, are open source and free to have uh, database engines. You can download them freely. Like I said, with the exception of Microsoft SQL Server. I'm not, sure, I'm not so sure if there's a light version or a community version. I, I, I'm not so sure. Um, personally, I use SQL Server uh, at work because my employer uses that. Uh, and, and personally, I use Postgres and SQLite. Uh, MySQL is a pretty famous name, and MariaDB is a fork or a split from MySQL. I think, if I'm not mistaken, that split took place once uh, Oracle purchased MySQL. And like I said, all of them are open source and free to have, with the exception of uh, Microsoft SQL Server. Uh, SQLite is here an exception. It also runs on SQL. However, uh, it does not have, the, or let's let's put it this way, the SQL in an SQLite database, uh, an SQLite database does not have the same SQL functionality as the other uh, solutions here. <clears throat> all of them here, all of them here, with the exception of SQLite, are so-called database servers meaning they run on a server and you then access that database server. Um, if you install PostgreSQL or MySQL or MariaDB on your machine, your machine is acting hence as a, as a server. You, I mean, even if it's only you calling the database, this is a server engine working. The database is, a, is, is, like a, is sort of a, like a server and every query is then querying that server. With SQLite, the story is a bit different. SQLite is just, it packs a whole database in just one file. That's the beauty of SQLite. It is very compact. You just have one file, which you can, you know, insert anywhere. Uh, it, again, if I'm not mistaken, uh, SQLite da databases are often used for uh, instance in mobile applications where space is limited and where you don't have, we don't often have a connection to, a, to, to, to the internet to query a, a database server. So in many applications and on mobile, on mobile uh, devices, uh, the, the, the base or the, the data is found in SQLite databases. Like I said, the only um, disadvantage of SQLite that a lot of, or some of the functionality in SQL databases, in SQL, database servers is not found in SQLite. Now the course is not tied to any of these databases. It's, it's, it is a general SQL uh, course or series. And the database, the main database I'll be using is Postgres, but you can follow with any other database engine. I will also use the secondary database SQLite in order to show certain code aspects, but obviously some things would work on PostgreSQL, which wouldn't work on SQLite because SQLite does not have that feature in its code. Um, coming to the data we'll be using, I like to use real world data. And this is from a website called uh, Open Food Facts. I'll post the link in the description below. 
and in it you'd find all the nutrition facts to any food you purchase anywhere in the world. Uh, I don't know if all foods are in there, but there's a lot. And you can see here some images. Now, this is you can query the website for um, individual foods, but more interesting for us is down here, data, API, and SDKs. And if you go there, there's a lot of um, there's a lot of uh, means to extract that data. And uh, what, what I used is the CSV. I downloaded the CSV file. And what I used, I used a software called CSV Splitter. I'll post the link for that as well in the description. And I, I took off the first 400,000 records out of that CSV. The CSV itself is enormous. I think it's got like one point three or so million records. Uh, I just extracted uh, 400,000. That's more than enough for our purposes. And, uh, we're, and anyways, uh, trying to get the whole uh, CSV into a, uh, into a database could be problematic. So that's why I reduced it to 400,000. But you can also reduce it. If you use CSV splitter, you can also reduce your data set to the first 100,000. I mean, that's more than enough. So I used that. What I did, I, I imported that database in both my SQLite database and my Postgres uh, uh, database. A good software for using SQLite is, that's one of my favorites, DB Browser for SQLite. It's a pretty uh, simple, very intuitive user interface for you to generate or create SQLite databases to create tables, to browse data. And I'll show you a sample. This is now DB Browser SQLite. I have it installed here. And this is the, this is the Open Foods uh, Facts data that encompasses the, those 400,000 records that I, that I uh, split from the main CSV file. And if I click here, you can see the structure of that table, basically the, the whole fields or columns and the type of uh, uh, content they have. This we will discuss them, you know, in the next videos, that's in detail. And to browse the data, you just click here. So here's the data from that table, but we're not gonna be working a lot in database structure or browse data, but if you're using SQLite or if you're using DB Browser for SQLite, your main area of operations is gonna be here. And here's where you input your SQL code. And here you will see the found set. So that's one way of following this course. And a second way would be to use uh, Postgres. You can download it for free. This is the user interface for uh, Postgres. It's called, you can see the name here, PG Admin 4. And here we have the data from the very same table I showed you in the SQLite and you can see all the fields in here. So this is, this is, this is our um, query tool, our SQL query tool. This could be found on the tools query tool and you would then have your, uh, let me call that, I would get another instance, now an empty instance and my initial instance is here. So that, that is the query tool and in here we'll be doing or carrying or inserting our SQL code and then uh, pressing on play. It could be, if you're using an older version of SQL, this could be, could have a different form, could have a form of uh, lightning. So, uh, but that's the same, same effect where you run it. And if, uh, if I'm not mistaken, yeah, exactly. You can also run it uh, via the F5 keyboard uh, key. And uh, here we have the data. And here we're going to be using, we we'll are be doing our SQL work. Obviously, you can, you um, um, I'm going to generate a dump out of this data for those people wishing to use uh, Postgres. Uh, in, for those wishing to use SQLite, you will get both uh, the data that DB Browser for SQLite database and uh, or uh, you can use the CSV file and import that on your own in the, in the, um, in the database. So that about covers the logistics. Um, 
what I'm going to do in the next video, I'm going to tackle the issue of uh, data, getting that data, and how I did it. And you can follow these steps, or you can just download the data that I uploaded for you. Um, it was quite an intricate process because uh, I had some problems with both Postgres and the DB browser for SQLite. So in the second video, I'll explain in detail the whole nitty gritty. But nevertheless, you can set up your favorite database engine if you have any. Otherwise, get yourself uh, Postgres, download it, install it, and uh, you know, just 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 be able to uh, uh, call PG admin. Once you call PG admin, um, the, the application on your computer it will open a browser window, and you are then in a window like this, where you have databases and and, and tables and so on. I will show you in the next video how to set that thing up. Um, With SQLite, the process is, is simpler. All you have to do is go to File, uh, Import, Table from CSV file, pick that CSV file that I prepared for you, and then you can just uh, have that, uh, that application create that table for you with the data in it, and uh, you're then ready to go. And if you're truly a newbie, a complete beginner, I would then suggest you start off with this one before uh, trying a Postgres uh, installation. Like I said, I'll be using both Postgres and SQLite or DB Browser for SQLite. And that code, which does not work here, I will then um, explain it. And obviously can't run it here, we'll be running it just in the Postgres. For all others, whether using SQL Server or MySQL, the code should work. I, I obviously I couldn't test it in all uh, databases, but it should work because I'm staying away from vendor specific uh, features and languages and, and features, uh, language features. So I'm going to stick to, you know, pure SQL.